Okay, hello and welcome everyone to the weekly colloquium for the School of Astrophysics. And thanks to everyone that who actually gave and heard the MSc talks for the last two days and are still here. And uh, we are very glad to have with us Professor Devashish Mojumdar from Shah Institute of Nuclear Physics. Professor Mojumdar did his undergraduate studies in St. Xavier's College and then his master's in Vishwabharat University. And then he did his PhD uh, from PRL, Physical Research Laboratory, was a postdoc with uh, Professor Amitabh Burai Choudhury at the University of Calcutta, spent a uh, research uh, career at ICTP in Italy. And then in the year 2000, uh, Professor Mojumdar joined the Saha Institute of Nuclear Physics. And uh, there is a long association with uh, Professor Mojumdar and uh, the Department of Physics uh, and us at Presidency. So a uh, few of our students, Choyon Chatterjee and Tista Mukherjee, who are your seniors who are now doing well, uh, they did their master's project uh, with Professor Mojumdar. And also he was, he taught for one semester as a guest faculty in our MSc courses. So we are very glad that we have him again with us. And today he's going to talk about uh, multifaceted you know ideas of dark matter and so without further delay i welcome professor mujumdar on stage thank you thank you suchetana for asking me to give this colloquium i am glad to return to presidency and uh, thank you all. But first is the humble apology because this there, there is a typo there. This is not a humble account of multifaceted dark matter. Uh, this will, will be a humble account. So I am uh, I am sorry for this uh, typo. This is a uh, title is a humble account of multifaceted dark matter. So, actually, yeah, the what you don't have to Yes. So dark matter is now a very vast subject, and uh, what I believe is the confluence of three major aspects of borderline physics, which are particle physics, astrophysics, and cosmology. So it is almost impossible to cover everything within one hour. Each one topic of dark matter requires one week here. but I have tried my best to summarize everything in one talk. Uh, maybe the astrophysics part, you think you are expert, uh, your faculties are expert, much more expert than me. That part, I, I will skip a little bit, but the other parts, particularly the particle part, I will describe uh, a little bit. So what is dark matter? Now, by now, everybody of us knows that it is an unknown non luminous matter with almost no interaction with any other particle to be uh, any other known particles, it cannot be seen. Uh, and that's why it's that because there's no interaction with other particles. And uh, uh, it has no charge, otherwise it won't have detected it by now. That's why it is dark. And it constitutes a mammoth, more than 80% of the mass of the universe. And more than 27% of the total mass of the universe, this I think everybody knows. And this is all pervading across solar system, galaxies, galaxy clusters, superclusters, etc. That means it is all pervading over all the uh, Since it is a dark matter, that, that means we do not know it. That means it most likely it is not um, any standard model particles. The standard model particles means it is. It is it does not belong to the group of quarks or leptons or the Higgs bosons or the Higgs bosons. Yes. Well, uh, people say that neutrinos can be a candidate for dark matter. Okay, if it is a candidate for dark matter, then 
it can contribute a very, very useful amount, maybe one to four percent of the total dark matter content of the universe, and that can be estimated from the planet results of KMT and Exotrop, which is from there only we know that it is 27.5% of dark matter, 59% of dark energy level, and 5% is ordinary matter, and ordinary matter means uh, the matter uh, in consequence are the quartz electrons and other heat and heat. That means the fundamental particles, the matter of the fact of the made up of the fundamental particles. Okay. Uh, so, but there is one thing, there is one surprising thing is that uh, we know what is the relic density now, and that's how we know that what is the 0.5% matter is dark matter. And if we consider a particle, we do not know what particle that is, which is the mass is on the order of 20, 30 GeV, and this interaction is in the ballpark of weak interaction of standard model, then it can be produced this 27.5% thing. That means the very density. And this is a this is a this is a coincidence. One doesn't know why it should be so, but then uh, with this people try to proceed. And since this is a GB order dark matter, so this is massive. And this interaction, it appears that is in the ballpark of weak interaction uh, to uh, to satisfy that relative density. That's why sometimes it is called weakly interactive massive particle. And that is a popular candidate, but that is not all. I mean, uh, the swing particles are not seen anywhere. There are enormous amount of efforts all over the world to detect wing directly or indirectly, but none far. So that's why people are now coming up with other candidates for argument, and which I will try to focus on uh, in in some detail or sometimes hurriedly, but I will try to uh, show you what are the dark matter candidates that that things are now in the except uh, other than wings. Wings is a popular candidate, but it is in each every passing day, the the fate of wings is becoming complex. So the discovery first, I think I have seen uh, he used the uh, yes. I think yes. he also must have shown, perhaps he has shown this slide also. In fact, he will see the slide and then we confess. <laughs> so, so this is first that dark matter exists. That idea came from John Wood in 1932, as early as 1932, who was measuring the motion of the particles up and down. The galactic disk will keep to a galactic disk. The galactic disk is around two kilograms in thick. So the particles going up and down on this, he tried to measure. And what he found is that the speed is not commensurate with the total visible mass, the gravity of the total visible mass. So that means he can conjecture that must be invisible mass is there, and on that basis. He tried to calculate what should be the density of that invisible mass, which he found 2 GeV per cc. But, uh, but the local value, of the, uh, modern value of the local dark matter density is much less than this. Some people say 0.2 GeV, some people say 0.4 GeV. Uh, so then, so this is uh, actually uh, in the galactic domain. In the galaxy cluster domain, then comes this person, Wiki. He actually trying to measure the velocities at the, I'm sorry, the mass. Actually, mass, so you can calculate how much gravity is there, and that you need to measure the velocity, which is, uh, which is again, velocity of what? Uh, the velocity of the particles that in galaxy cluster, in a galaxy cluster. And then he tried to find out what is the luminous matter present in a galaxy cluster. A galaxy cluster, you know, I mean, I do not have to say to all of the students, you know that uh, 
all the all the part of uh, particles, all the bodies inside the galaxy cluster, all the galaxies are moving in a common gravitational field of galaxies, and that means those those motions are bilialized. So in that type of a galaxy cluster, I mean all galaxy clusters are like that, the motions are bilialized, they will be the form galaxy cluster, I mean gravitationally bound system. There he tried to find out the mass of the luminous matter versus the mass of the unseen matter because it was the motion of the galaxies in a galactic cluster also shows these differences uh, with the gravitation uh, provided by the luminous matter. That means non-luminous, that means unknown matter must be there. So with this, I'm just keeping two things, this is Puma uh, cluster and Virgo cluster, I think, he actually measured those uh, uh, galaxy velocities and uh, luminosities, etc. So his estimate is actually the mass, the total mass of that galaxy cluster is 400 times the visible mass, should be 400 times the visible mass of that particular galaxy cluster in Suma, uh, which was not true, which was not true because, but at least he got the thing right that there is invisible mass there in the galaxy cluster also. I mean, his wrong uh, result mainly due to he used the wrong value of the Hubble parameter, which is 550 meters per second, not 750 per second per second per second. Uh, so the present value is mass of coma cluster is 50 times the visible mass of the coma cluster. But these are all certainly things I should uh, pass too fast because there are a lot of things to say. These things I, 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 I am sure you have seen a lot of times. Then this is uh, Vera Rubin, who actually again in, inside the galaxy measured the velocities of the star, and then the flat rotation curve of the stars where, I mean, uh, rotation curve means the velocity of a star uh, from the as a function of the center of the of the of the galaxy. Uh, so there he found she found that it is rising up and then becomes almost flat. But what it should be, it should rise up and then a Keplerian decline it should show, but it's not showing that it's almost flat. This means there is amount, uh, enormous amount of mass ex, uh, inside that spiral galaxy where he, uh, he has made, his, where she has uh, uh, made his uh, observations. Uh, and yeah, then uh, that means beyond the visible limit of the galaxy, that means the galaxy disk, there are unseen matter beyond. There is a back of the envelope calculation that what can do, the centripetal force, the centripetal force here should be equal to the gravitational force, m squared by rgm by r squared. Now you see if uh, e is constant, dr is constant, that, uh, that's what she found that dr is constant, then what will happen dr is constant means mr goes at r, mr goes at r. That means beyond the visible limit of the of that galaxy, there are dark matter is there. That, that means there is a dark matter halo in which embedded is the galactic disk or the visible portion of the dark matter. And also, I mean, putting mr is equal to force cut by r cube rho uh, near the galactic center, where you can put MR is equal to force cut by R cube rho, there you can show that VR goes at R, which describes this part, raising VR goes at R. Then there should be a Keplerian decline, which is not in this case. And there you can, when you are away from the galactic center, you can uh, consider this mass is concentrated at the center, so, so this mass is constant, and in that case, we are, you see, this one by into R, which is a, a Keplerian decline. But it is not so, because we are is constant, almost constant, so they are those as R. That means the galaxy is sitting embedded within a very big halo. That means the dark matter is extended beyond the visible reaches of the, of, of, of the galaxy, maybe 200, 300 megawatts, it's extending. 
and uh, now that means so far we have seen that the evidence of dark matter is only gravitation and that is so even today the evidence of dark matter is only uh, gravitational other than those uh, those uh, those curves of the this, uh, rotation curves of the spiral galaxies and all the evidence of the presence of unknown matter all over the galaxies and galaxy clusters etc are now proved beyond doubt by many other, by other things and one of them is gravitational lensing so if this also uh, i mean i'm sure you all uh, know if there is a huge mass there and the observer is there and there is a background galaxy or galactic cluster is there then the light from here will bend into due to gravity and will form uh, einstein's ring uh, images that means this will form a circular image which is called einstein's ring and then uh, from there, you can estimate the mass, the lensing mass, that means the mass uh, in between the observer and the uh, object, uh, how much mass is there that one can uh, estimate. Uh, that means if there is a galaxy cluster is there, there is a huge amount of dark matter is there and that lens a background object. And then from that lensing effect, that means from the image, the images and the and the radius of this uh, ring, etc., one can uh, one know how much mass can be put there. And from that also, uh, scientists or astronomers found out the dark matter halo around the galaxy or the galaxy cluster. That means dark matter is everywhere. Uh, this is the same thing. This is the more fancy picture of the same thing that I have shown in the earlier slide. And this uh, next is a, this is very this is also a back of the envelope calculation of the lens equation. Uh, here you see this is a observer, this is the source, and this is the this is the dark matter or the lensing material. And then from this triangle geometry, you can easily write the you can use uh, uh, this pi is equal to pi is equal to, is equal to ps plus si. From that, from these two triangles, you can write the yes, theta this is the equation, which is the lens equation, and uh, substituting alpha to be this, uh, you can solve you, you can solve this equation as theta is equal to that theta is this angle. But one thing is that if this, there is an extended object and this is circularly distributed, this lensing object, then you won't get only one image, but there are multiple uh, images. In a circle, and that is what uh, this is shown here actually this multiple images. So, this is the actual photograph of a lensing photograph where you see these things are the images of the background object, and here in the foreground is the lensing material that means the galaxy cluster by the dark matter which is this is the lens. And there are so many equations, lensing equations. I, I'm sure you will read or you know by 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 now. And from there, you can estimate the mass of the of the galaxy cluster inside. Now, what is ah, there is one more. This is these two are the are falling in the category of um, strong lensing and weak lensing. Strong lensing means the sharp image will be produced. The sharp sharp circular image will be produced. And weak lensing means it will be far images, uh, distorted images. But there is one more lensing is there that is called the micro lensing. Here you see in the an observer in the earth is is watching a star, but a huge massive body like a macho. Macho is massive astrophysical compact objects which are also can be used for dark matter. They are floating around in the space, and it came in between the line of sight of the star and the observer on the earth. Then, when it is coming on the light of, uh, line of sight, then the star light will be lensed by that macho or that massive, massive object. And, and if the star is in the, at, at the focus, 
of the star or distance and the lens uh, of this uh, lens, focal length of the lens if the star is, then what the observer will see that suddenly the star's brightness increase and then it's, it then again uh, falls back to its previous brightness as the matter passes by. So this is uh, micro lensing and this matter that I just talked about, uh, the existence of matter are deciphered by this kind of micro lensing observations. But one doesn't know what the matters are made up of. Some some groups say that it can be based on knowledge, but that is debatable. <laughs> there is a paper even last two thousand four four by 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 Shivaji Dada Jackson and Dada that is based on knowledge, but okay. <laughs> Next is uh, so this is just I am skipping because all these things I just told that is actually listed here. Uh, only one thing I think I didn't say here is the bullet cluster, and uh, well, yeah. So bullet cluster is this, and this also I do not have to describe much because I have to tell so many other things, important things here. Two galaxy clusters collide. This is an expanding gas, which is a visible gas that is get distorted by the enormity of the collision of the two uh, clusters. But you see the galactic, uh, but, the, but the dark matter halo of those two galaxy clusters pass by uh, within each other almost undistorted. But again, this is not so. If the dark matter, so far we know that dark matter, because it is mass, it has to interact gravitationally. And there is perhaps no other interaction, even if there is a minuscule. But if they self interact with each other, then there will be a dragging force of this dark matter. And people will try to measure that. And from that, they be the bound what could be the cross section mark of that uh, self interaction. And that is around. Three gram per centimeter from 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 bullet cluster they gave uh, one gram per centimeter square, but I mean Subhi Sarkar et al. from other uh, observations, other cluster observation, they gave about three gram per centimeter. Okay, now come to the uh, evolution of the dark matter towards the dwelling. So initially. The dark matter and the standard model were in thermal and chemical equilibrium. Thermal and equilibrium means both are in constant temperature, same temperature, same temperature with the universe. And chemical equilibrium means that two dark matter annihilates to produce two standard model particles again back reaction in the same way. That means thermal and chemical equilibrium. Now, as the universe expands and cools down, the number density. At initially, when the universe is hot, the number density goes as a temperature cube, and when it is cools down, the number density exponentially reduces. Then, a time comes when the, 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 the expansion rate of the universe uh, becomes much more than the interaction rate between the two particles. Then, what happens? These two particles, those those particles becomes uh, cannot uh, interact with each other, and they, they become frozen. And that is called the freeze-up. And because this uh, dark matter originates thermally, that means they produce thermally, they produce from the interaction of the two standard model particles, and they are in thermal equilibrium. They are called the thermal dark matter. And this is an equation which gives you the relic density. But this equation can be derived from this uh, Boltzmann equation and all. This is a Boltzmann equation. Yeah, but, but one can guess actually, just by looking at it, that one can write down intuitively this equation. dn chi by dt is the time evolution of this. n chi is the dark matter number density. C n chi is the density because of the expansion of the universe. Why there will be H? I have written down here. You see, this is this is this is density. That means one by length cube. So, dt of one by length cube. 
comes around this. So this is, I can write it as minus C1 by R2, 1 by R, DRD, but this is Hubble. Yeah, this, this is just a, a, a naught by A. So this is due to the expansion of the universe, and this is sigma B. Here, actually, the particle physics input, input goes in. This is the annihilation cross section because two dark matter comes and interact with each other, forming two standard two particles. So, this is the cross section of that interaction. Uh, this sigma b, and then equilibrium number density, and this is the number density. So, this, even if one do not do all these big calculations, one can intuitively write down this Boltzmann equation, which will give you. The, the number density and also the relic density. So then after that, what happens? After they stop uh, interacting each other, they become uh, relic. So this, uh, they equilibrate. That means they go to an equilibrium. So here, this number density comes and equilibrate. That will be, becomes constant. Uh, uh, so here, for the thermal dark matter, the particles are moving towards the equilibrium. But there are another category of dark matter which is non-thermal dark matter, where, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the, here the particle, the, the dark matter is going away from the out of equilibrium. But in the non-thermal dark matter, the particles are moving towards the equilibrium. But in this case, the particles are created non-thermally. That means from decay of some some heavy particles or something, and then they grow. Then they grow, grow, and grow, and then reach towards equilibrium and becomes then. That's the freezing mechanism. That's the freezing mechanism, and that was the freeze out mechanism. Okay, so uh, so this is just another freeze out and freezing in the same. Uh, uh, picture this is going out of the equilibrium along this line going out of the equilibrium this is freezing uh, uh, going into the towards the uh, equilibrium okay so these are all known things and um, okay. now dark matter depending on how they are produced they are thermal or non-thermal i mean it will be wrong to say how they are produced, rather how they decouple from the universe's plasma. They can be uh, categorized as thermal, non-thermal, and there is other things also, which uh, which I will try to mention at least, or I'll try to elaborate this to some extent. Okay, so, uh, so, so far, so good, only thermal or uh, non-thermal, uh, but there are self-interaction things there that also, takes part in the in the freeze out uh, process, uh, relic process, etc., and they uh, give rise to different categories of dark matter. Okay. So types of dark matter then, depending on its uh, energy or temperature or the velocity, they can be categorized as cold dark matter. That means they are not relativistic at the time of freeze out. Hot dark matter, they are relativistic at the time of uh, phase out in between these two warm dark matter. Depending on the particle nature, they can be baryonic or non-baryonic. Depending on how they are produced, they are thermal or non-thermal. And there are other things. This uh, wind seem, seem in strongly interacting massive particles, elder, what is elder, I will tell. And the dark matter candidates can be very many. There can be supersymmetric candidates, particle candidates, extra-dimensional candidates. Other beyond standard model theories from that of the dark matter, from axion, heavy yeah. neutrinos, and the list goes on. But I will try to give glimpses of some of them very briefly. Okay, so this is just only one slide about supersymmetry. I won't dwell on that. Uh, supersymmetry, everybody knows that uh, this is the another set of particles. That means the particle number in the universe are covered by uh, by introducing this theory. In this theory, it says that fundamental particles are these, all right, but then there are other particles, which are the uh, bosonic super partner of the fermions in the standard model, and the, and the uh, fermionic super partner of the bosons of uh, in the standard model. And the uh, dark matter candidate in supersymmetry, the popular candidate 
is the is the uh, neutral you know which is the superposition of the electroweak gauge bosons the neutral electroweak gauge bosons and the Higgs bosons but one can question why there is one Higgs and what's mentioned further the electroweak but this is not the place to discuss this but just only I want to mention that to make the theory anomaly free there we need Higgs that's why it is here, when the B is there, this the resonance equation doesn't get up. That is B1Y. There is a hypertached gate boson. There is a photon and the dead zero. If you mix, then there will be two states. One state is this, other state is that. Okay, so then uh, one can get a four cross four mass matrix for this neutral, you know, and the lowest eigenstate. Uh, by diagonalizing that four cross four matrix, the lowest eigenstate is the dark matter candidate. And who gives this stability? Because the dark matter has to be stable because it is because it's decay to other uh, standard model particles. Then of course this no more uh, dark matter because we know the dark matter is stable and they are uh, relic and stable. So this is given by something called this hard parity, which is given by minus one to be called the three D, the baryon number, lepton number, and spin. And this for, for Sudi, it is minus one for standard model is one. Means if for this uh, neutral, you know, this is conserved, then it cannot decay because if it has to decay to the standard model particles, then this R should be one. But this, if this is conserved, this R parity, then it cannot decay. That means it is stable. That's the whole point. Next is there is also this just one slide. Just give you a glimpse of how we will do this. This is uh, Kaluza Klein dark matter, the dark matter in extra dimension theory. Say, for instance, simplistic, I'm not going ADP model and the simplistic, just a, another uh, extra dimension, why? Spatial extra dimension, and this is uh, usual, zero, one, two, three. So take a massless scalar, phi is equal to phi x phi. Then the Lagrangian, writing the Lagrangian density is easy, minus half, tell me phi, tell me phi here, because this is phi, this is going. Five. Now compactify that spatial dimension, compactify that over a circle. When you compactify over a circle, that means you will making this spatial dimension periodic. That means your pi xy, you can write it as the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 as this, and this is e to the i n y by r. That means your Lagrangian now can be written like this. And now we you from the action. Of this Lagrangian, you integrate out this uh, this extra dimension. What you will get is surprising. What you will get is zero mode and a tower of other modes which was not there earlier. So just by compactification of the extra dimension, you are getting a zero mode and and a tower of other modes and a little bit inspection. Of our knowledge of the Klein model equation, we say that this is actually mass of the fifth momentum. But then this conservation of this momentum gives the stability of the dark matter. But what is the dark matter? Dark matter is in this tower, the lowest one, that means k is equal to one uh, particle in this tower is actually uh, acts as a dark matter. And uh, this the stability is given by the conservation of this part, which is actually the fifth model. Let's say you have more time to compare this. If they don't have the dark, that's the dark, it's not good. Then, can I get back to my world? Then, 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 but then the will be zero, and this will be just uh, just uh, this one. L will be just here. I mean, the question arises here. This is a massless scalar. Yeah. Yeah. How does how does nothing work? Why nothing works? Because the dark matter is not stable. Yeah. 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 So this is uh, this is in some complex sense is coming to it. Let me show that this is this is not violating any any mass energy division. Only thing is that this is 
I mean, the dispersion is in relation to that is square to the square plus n square. In that case, in the next square, you write p pi square. E square is e square equal to p square at p pi square. So this will be small term, and that is from the so the Yes, absolutely. And the compact is. Cross section and now calculate the relative density 
and try to match delta to such that it matches with the resistance that you by that. And that's how you will fix delta 2 and all this all this uh, mathematical thing that is there, delta 2, lambda, etc. That uh, this is how you will fix. This, this is the trick we will section and sigma by m here because the cross section you cannot directly measure so they give this ratio the sigma by m gm the dark matter mass should be of the order of three centimeters per gram and they got it from the measurement of the Hubble cluster collision to uh, so this i try to elaborate the more because this is now a in thing actually in the dark matter particle research uh, here you see, here is a, this thing here, it says the mass in the star, mass in the star is this one. This is dark matter rising. Total mass in white, dark matter belonging to black, yeah. So, you see the center of the dark matter halo is shifted a bit from the star and also the total mass, the total visible mass. That means there is a shift of the dark matter and that is, that has happened due to the self interaction of the dark matter. This is a schematic diagram here also that this dark matter halo is shifted from it, it should enclose the visible matter. No, this is the spherical thing that should enclose, but it is shifted because of this collision of different galaxies. This is shifted. From this shift, actually, one tries to estimate what is the cross section uh, of the cell interaction, like the Sufi Solver, etc., Monochka, the Kabbalin, but also the kind of work. And they gave this uh, bomb, the uh, gram per centimeter square. Okay. Now, now we are going deeper inside actually uh, regarding this uh, uh, freeze out business uh, using the, the self interaction. There are two kinds of things are there. There is one is called strongly interacting massive particle and this is elder. Uh, elder is elastically decoupling rate. And simply, I mean, there are three processes we have to speak. One is elastic scattering, another is just annihilation, that means two chi enables to give two standard model particles and there is self annihilation that means two chi's giving two chi's or multiple chi's or it can be other way around that means three chi's giving two chi's that, that is called chemical so there are all sorts of things are going on in the cosmos i mean on that basis uh, people are trying to find out what how best we can understand this self interaction business which is now becoming uh, important in even the I mean, structure formation also. So, in the simp model, you see, is, uh, the relic abundance is determined by the self annihilation. Self annihilation is this part. That means 
this part becomes sparse. But still, the temperature is maintained with the universal temperature by the process of elastic scattering. This annihilation uh, uh, decoupled much earlier. So, this is one model where the relic abundance is determined by this, but the temperature is then still maintained by this elastic scattering. Then, ultimately, eventually, elastic scattering also decoupled and this became actual relic. On the other hand, this elder dark matter, electrically decoupling dark matter, here this one decoupled fast. This one decoupled much earlier. This we won't bother. And then the temperature is maintained by the cell cannulation process. Uh, and at one point of time, this cell cannulation also decoupled uh, from the uh, universe, and this becomes a relic. But this is enormous consequences of these two models, actually, which has, uh, maybe some time in the future I can talk about, but uh, why suddenly these two models came in? Because there are uh, an enormous impact on the dark matter physics. Uh, so this is just a uh, diagram. You see this thermalized standard model and thermalized dark matter are coming with that TQ, then exponential decay of the of the density Y chi is uh, actually N chi by S, uh, the entropy. And so this is falling and first decoupling uh, here, the this chi chi going to standard model, standard model annihilation gone. Then here is uh, elastic the scattering decouples here. Then it goes down, but still the temperature is maintained by the by the uh, self scattering means the self annihilation, self scattering, and then ultimately that that also known and it becomes very. So, but this looks like I mean why I am doing this and all, but. They have uh, enormous uh, implications, and I am telling you one more thing: that they they, they gave, gave an estimate of this uh, elastic scattering coupling and this cannibal coupling. This is a three dark matter going to two dark matter, which is alpha. Now, this can be actually estimated from the twenty-one centimeter physics, uh, which I am doing now with my students, and I am getting very uh, interesting results that. This one plays a minor role. This one plays a major role in the in the in the dark matter content of the uh, universe. So whatever it is, that means this 21 centimeter edges result whether it's wrong or right. But if edges result is right, then of course these two things plays. I mean, one can one can measure these two things. I mean, rather uh, in some accuracy. So so uh, so far so good. Uh, so this is another uh, this thing in which mass range these elder dark matter, thin dark matter, mixed dark matter works. You see, there are full amount of mass range for dark matter, which goes actually from the 10 to the minus 22 electron volt, which is the axion dark matter, to the TV scale dark matter. And uh, since the wheel is one that doesn't get the wheel, that is 30 GB, 20 GB dark matter, people are looking for whether there is MEB dark matter means they are or not. But to detect this energy dark matter, here for the wind dark matter, the interaction is made with the nucleus, nucleus of the proton of the detecting material. But since the dark matter, if we make if we make it light, then the electron scattering also will do. So people are trying for the uh, whether the electron scattering of the dark matter can give us some some hint, some glimpse of the low mass dark matter. So, so people are trying all this, but there are other dark matter also, very light dark matter, like the this would be minus 22 mass, which is called the fuzzy dark matter, which uh, I am, maybe I think this is there, but prior to that, to make it complete, or semi-complete, which is never complete, the dark matter is a huge subject. So this is sterile neutrino dark matter. Now, sterile neutrino is a hypothetical thing. We know the three kinds of neutrinos are there at by standard model, they are massless, but from the oscillation experiments, it is now established that the that the neutrinos have mass. But to generate mass, one needs a sterile neutrino. If there is a sterile neutrino, then that can be a dark matter candidate, but then its stability, etc., has to be ensured. So the stability requires this one. I am telling you what is this. This M1 is the mass of the sterile neutrino, which is the dark matter candidate. And theta one, this is the, is the mixing angle of that sterile neutrino with the electron neutrino. Theta one, theta two, let's see like that. Uh, 
and this theta is given by this equation, where this is the equal coupling between the the uh, sterile neutrino uh, and the uh, sterile neutrino and the active uh, neutrino, because otherwise you cannot generate mass. You have to have some uh, equal coupling. I mean, neutrino and the neutrino then the Higgs, that kind of product you, uh, you get to to, to uh, have a to have a mass generation. So, so this is that, and then for the sterile neutrino is unstable. It, it, it is it can be shown that it is unstable. I am not elaborating on that. And the decay width is like this, but this has to be made stable at least. Its lifetime should be of the order of the universe's lifetime, so that it can qualify itself to be a candidate for dark matter. And that will be there if this equation is satisfied. Uh, and theta one is this small. That is m one is the mass of the active neutrino. M one is the mass of the sterile. This capital M one is the mass of the sterile neutrino. It also can decay uh, by the radiative decay process. Radiative decay process means this is a particle can exchange. This is just just does not decay at T level, but with the after a loop it decays. Right? So this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, Probability is very low, but even then, if it is decay in that process, very small decay, then what we will get a small window of gamma, and this decay width is given by this. This is just to show or demonstrate that the dilate, if it's a dark matter, what are the consequences, and how can it be detected? It can only be detected by the decay of this uh, radiative or otherwise, which gives rise to uh, photons or x rays. In a very small way, but in the background of the extra background of the galaxy, this is very difficult to detect. Okay, now comes the primordial dark black hole in the dark, uh, as dark matter, which is now a very hot subject. And so all, all, all people all over the world are trying this for primordial black hole. Uh, the generation process, of course, I uh, I am not very converted with, but of course, any black hole generation, primordial black hole generation, there has to be a overtense region, there has to be homogeneity, and there has to be quantum fluctuation, etc. In the uh, during the during the inflationary era, and the uh, primordial black hole came out after the inflationary era when uh, reheating period set. Uh, there is an estimate of mass. There is a, there are papers are written. There are uh, there. That the that the uh, one can write down the Schwarzschild radius for this primordial black holes, and from that density, this is the Schwarzschild radius, and then the mass density of the universe uh, at that period can be as a function of time can be written as this. So these two has at least should be equal for the prim primordial black hole to form. So the mass of the primordial black hole. At least can be roughly estimated as the Hubble mass. That means the mass content within the within the Hubble uh, radius at that epoch of the universe. Uh, that means after maybe one second of the Big Bang, within one one second of the Big Bang. Uh, but one thing to note is that there, there is a temperature dependence of these TBH black holes. That means. Different era, that means if, if it is a Planck era black hole, then its mass is something. If it is a later era black hole, then its mass is something. So, for instance, the Planck era, it will be, I think, 10 to the minus 5 gram or so. But in the later stage, it can be this 10 to the 15 gram or more. And also, one more thing uh, this black hole is there, it will radiate things by having radiation. And if the mass is less than 10 to the 15, then they are measured away by now. Only the mass, which is around 10 to the 15 gram, they are still now uh, evaporating, and we can get, we may get the signatures of this TBH <coughs> by the uh, the particles that are emitted due to this uh, evaporation. And they are 21 centimeter thick again become very high. Uh, okay, so. So this is just what I said. This is uh, summarized here, um, and also just one thing I like to mention that the TBH would evaporate by Hawking radiation and produce electron, positron, or other atom particles. 
that to interact with the medium of the magnetic field of the galaxies, etc., to emit pink proton radiation or inverse proton processes. And that also can be detected, maybe detected by future SPA experiments and all. Uh, so actually, we have done one calculation uh, and showed that it is possible for the TV evaporation thing, and TVs can be detected by in what frequency or what uh, gun speed frequency the, the SKA can uh, have to run so that TVs can be detected. Some said, well, uh, not me, and, uh, I, I have done, and the other people also have done. Okay, so this primordial black hole is continuing. Yeah, one more thing, one more point is that. Uh, this has to be a cold dark matter candidate because at the present tip of the will be dynamically cooled. This is non thermally produced, so this is a non thermal dark matter. And uh, the primordial black hole cannot constitute the cold dark matter content. That means only a fraction can be a component of the cold dark matter content of this. And that fraction is defined by F EBH. And that uh, considering this to be a parameter, again, I told you the 21 centimeter signal. Is very useful here to make an estimate what could be the HPB. And this is, we make an estimate, this is very minuscule. And the minuscule is simply minus five, minus six order at the moment. But but at the, uh, when they are produced, that time it is much less, that that fraction was actually going to be minus 29 order. But this is very minuscule. One can show by, by 21 centimeter line, one can show. Okay. So here is a diagram which I got the PBH less universe and PBH full universe. What will happen? The only thing I can uh, comment here that if the PBH are there, the the illumination of the universe, the first light of the universe, came earlier in the dark ages. So when we consider in the dark ages, so in a in a in a, in a higher place. So that is uh, that is what that is a recent paper came in there try to try to say that dark age uh, is not actually not 300 million years but much less than that because of this uh, primordial black hole denied the but how much it is true or not that is still a okay then comes the fuzzy dark what is fuzzy dark matter is a dark matter are very small quantum tiny particles. And since a quantum particle is associated with a wavelength, this is so tiny that its associated wavelength is 3000 light years. This is but in comparison to radio wavelength, which is a few miles. The peak to peak of this fuzzy dark matter uh, wavelength may be one eighth of the arc galactic center distance. Uh, now, looking from afar, all these waves are there, that means all these. The big, big waves are there of long waves. So the galactic center looks fuzzy and it's flat. There is a problem is there. What is what is the density? That the density is crusty or flat? So crusty means it is puts up at the galactic center or it's a flat. It appears to be flat for both dark matter and the baryon, but people think that it must be concentrated, dark matter must be concentrated at the center of the galaxy. So, so the, uh, so it must be crusty. But if it is flat, one sees, then this fuzzy dark matter solves this problem. Okay, there are some more pure standard model dark matter like axion, Stephen center, uh, dark matter, little Higgs, composite Higgs, all, all sorts of things. And this guy, I mean, this appears. It will be nice actually if I show on everything. And not all I uh, that, that, that I know, but of course, this is Higgs and Axion I know it's in some detail, but maybe in some later time. Okay, so the dark matter mass range is you see from 10 to the minus 22, which is axion line particles of the fuzzy dark matter, to the PV EV range, which is the super heavy dark matter that should have been created. At the very early universe after the, the inflation due to the gravitational processes. Uh, so, this is a hidden, uh, and there are hidden sector dark matter. I mean, you can write your own theories and all. Uh, okay, now how much time I left? I think it's over. I think I have So, very briefly, dark matter bunting. Dark matter can be. There are two basically two 
metals, one is reduced detection metals, carbon comes and hits the nucleus, nucleus gets a kick, that is the recoil, that recoil energy one measures from that side to see whether the carbon is done or not. That is the direct carbon. Uh, and incident dark matter is too dark matter and it is to turn up on the particles like nucleus, gamma, etc. And then they try to measure the excess gamma, nucleus, etc. to see whether there is a dark matter or not. So this figure very nicely describes this. This one is a scattering diagram. You see chi, the dark matter, and there is a proton or a spinion, turning one spinion coming, it's going out, it's scattering. And you, you anti clockwise, you Put it, this is 90 degrees, then it will be what? It will be annihilation of dark matter going to two fermions. This is the indirect one. And you look it, you turn it at the 90 degrees and look it from this side, then you see this dark matter production, two standard for annihilation to produce the dark matter. So this diagram is a beautiful diagram which depicts all the three uh, processes of the dark matter interaction and dark matter production. Uh, so th this is what I just told the dark matter comes. Uh, Dark matter comes, sees the nucleus, nuclear is the kick, and we will try to measure that. Here, there are two aspects of the, the direct detection, yearly variation. How come yearly variation? Because you see the sun and all, we are art, from the art we are uh, measuring, and sun, the solar system is moving towards signals around the uh, this galactic center, and then it is being hit by the dark matter wing, dark matter halo is there everywhere. And for that, at some time, some point of time in the year, it will uh, encounter more dark matter clock than after six months it will encounter less uh, dark matter clock up because just because of the direction of the arc uh, uh, around the sun. So that gives rise to a variation of the of the dark matter yield uh, at the detector. And there is a, is a diurnal variation because of the rotation of the arc around its own axis, you see, you are measuring in this latitude, your xz axis is this, so a dark matter comes and hit at this angle. So after 90, after after 12 hours, this xz has changed, so there is an apparent variation of the directionality of the dark matter uh, uh, that it hits your uh, detector. So that gives a diurnal variation of the, of the uh, of the dark matter detection. And uh, I'm telling you, this calculation, I make this calculation, but this is a very cumbersome because we have to make a lot of frame change. Traditional yeah, frame, this frame, then galactic frame. This is a huge, huge metric. Okay. So this I'm skipping. This I'm just skipping. This is the theory. And uh, just to show here that what is the rate? Rate is given by this kind of equation. This is not very hard to reduce. This one can reduce by two pages actually. Uh, and but here you see this part simple scalar is a scattering cross section, which should come from the particle physics. This rho chi is the density of dark matter, which come from the from the astrophysics. And this comes from the nuclear physics. This is the form factor of the nucleus that is hitting. And this B mean and B solar, etc. The dark matter, the, 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 this in velocity, this is the, the, you have to make a frame change as a galactic frame, large frame, etc. And this is given by both cosmology and energy. Okay, so, um, so I am skipping this, but one, just one thing that is important for dark matter detection, this experimental this thing, this side, you see that the dark matter cross section is, um, is uh, is actually proportional to the the mass number square of the detecting material. So this is xenon uh, liquid xenon or whatever sodium pyrite. Uh, but you cannot just choose any mass number uh, material because you have to see the your coherence is not lost. So you see your the Broly wavelength is one by the momentum transfer. When the dark matter comes and hits the nucleus, the momentum transfer Q is given by this is also a three line calculation of the calculator transfer. This is just easy calculation, you can do this easily. And from this, M er is the recoil energy. And this M nucleus and the nucleus size is equal to one third 
each nucleon is a proton mass uh, one dB, and with that you can convert it into A and it gives this. So required energy should be if it is greater than this, then the pore energy is lost and you won't get any <coughs> proper result. So so the A just you, you can not just increase A, that means the the, 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 that means the mass number of the detecting material by any number or or reduce it by any number. This condition has to be satisfied. So, so I'm just skipping this. So what people did without seeing any you know, direct detection signature of the dark matter, this sigma by m, sigma is the uh, scattering cross section versus the mass of the dark matter. This is what gives, so these are the bounds you see these are coming down and down and down, and it will hit the neutrino float. That means this float, float means here, this is a neutrino forward scattering cross section limit. That means now what will happen that the dark matter detectors all over the world will detect neutrinos rather than dark matter if it hits this. Uh, this yes, ah, is already set up once we have yeah. hit. That's why I bring up the figure, that's why I can show it, but already it is there. So, this mass range, this 10 dB, 100 dB, this mass range, this is now gone. I mean, you, you cannot get it by uh, direct detection. So, what you have to do, you have to look for the lower mass range, the MEV range. But there, electron scattering will do. So, electron scattering, you see, it is still there is a hope because. For the lower mass range, it is still above 10 to the minus 30 centimeter square as against there 10 to the minus 47 centimeters. So now the indirect detection, if the dark matter is trapped in the by the gravity of the massive bodies like the sun or the galactic center, and if it is trapped in considerable numbers, then they can annihilate to produce the transforming particles like neutrinos and gamma. And then the people detect to uh, see whether the dark matter is there or not. So all these things are there. Uh, say, uh, neutrinos, positrons, antiprotons, synchrotron radiation from the charged particle in degrees of the galactic center, galactic magnetic field can give rise to synchrotron radiation, etc. So all these things one can uh, get. Uh, so excess gamma, excess neutron, positron, etc. can get. So I am just skipping this. Uh, just to show some results is the last part of this, um, my whatever I, I, I couldn't finish. I like to say so many other things because so many other things are there, but still I have to finish somewhere. So, so from the galactic center, the excess gamma is people got, but I mean, it's not conclusively proved that it is from the dark matter, but people are trying to look at it. So, one is the dwarf galaxy, these are the list of dwarf galaxies that I studied and many other people studied that the gamma coming from this, whether they can talk about any dark matter annihilation or not. So in this, uh, here with the, some model, there are other figures also I didn't show you just to demonstrate that this is the Pendulat gamma uh, observatory gave what is the bound for the dwarf galaxy gamma. And here, this is what our theory shows, this one, and this one is the, that follows the flying dark matter in this. So this is how it matches. This is within the this is within the bound, but uh, we cannot match it. But one thing we could match it is that the extragalactic gamma that estimate. You see, this is quite well matched from the power theory, and this is from the Kaluza line theory, which is not very good match. And this is what Fermilar gave from the extragalactic gamma, rate. and that also could come from the Dark matter annihilation, and there are many other things. So all are summed up to, to calculate this model. Uh, so then there are other indirect detections. There are su supermassive which uh, we did with the uh, with Siska actually. Uh, so then this decays to neutrinos, and this neutrino can be detected by the ice cube detector. And actually, ice cube got this TV range some three neutrinos, but they don't know from what they from what they come. From from where they came, uh, so it can so happen. We consider that it is a supermassive dark matter decays to neutrinos and gives rise to this. If that is so, then the supermassive dark matter mass would be of the order of this 
this for 10 to the 9, 10 to the 7, 10 to the 9 uh, D. And the DK time is in 18, 19, 200, very rare. So these are the kind of work people try to uh, do and see whether they can throw light on the dark matter uh, physics more. And this is the 21 centimeter light, and uh, I, I, I think you are much more educated on this 21 centimeter than I am. So 21 centimeter light uh, thing is another important thing from which the indirect detection of dark matter can be made, or other important conclusion of the dark matter can be made. So I am not going into this because I am sure that you know better than me actually, excuse me actually, many little bit of 21 centimeter light. Only thing is that it involves the spin temperature, and it involves the 21 centimeter temperature, which is against the background of the uh, cosmic microwave background. And the spin temperature to calculate one needs the uh, baryon temperature also. And the this uh, edges result, which gives uh, an anomaly, which is which gives an anomaly there, which is a dip there, which should could not be there in the T21 centimeter uh, result uh, from the from the cosmic dawn. This actually one can make use of to calculate various things about dark matter, and uh, people do this. So, so one thing is here you see uh, uh, this multi messenger signals, which is now these days is a very uh, very catchy word. Multi messenger signals from different sources, as the physical sources. So we did this multi messenger signals for heavy dark matter, which gives neutrinos, and the it is 21 centimeter result. So here, uh, with ice cube, this ice cube thing uh, catches should catch the heavy dark matter neutrinos, and and this also uh, uh, contribute to the 21 centimeter result. And also, if we include the primordial black hole uh, evaporation also. Then how this 21 centimeter result change or how it will uh, it will well or badly represent the 21 centimeter result? From that, some conclusions can be drawn. For the for the primordial black hole process of these different things, get this allowed feature. This is red means here is red within this dotted red and uh, there is a solid and dotted red. And for this MPH the uh, primordial black hole one this. Again, because because the 21 centimeter result has a width minus 300 millikelvin to minus 1000 millikelvin, that means we get a, a allowed region for this sigma 41 is the scattering dark matter baryon scattering and the dark matter mass. So there are many more things which I couldn't say here, but the point I try to drive is that you see that the mass of the dark matter here comes within 0.5 to 1 dB actually. If we do this multi messenger signal all together, that means it is a very broad topic. One doesn't know what is the actual mass of dark matter, or, or uh, it appears that there is not one component dark matter, there are multi component dark matter, different dark matters uh, have different masses, and they are different dark matter are used for different signal representation. And this, uh, I think. Thank you so much, Professor uh, Mulinda. So I think it was nice that we got a glimpse of the overview of what's been done within the dark star sector. And so, time for questions. I think I see a hand by Conrad and Mojo. Thank you. So I am say two questions. The first one is that whenever you talk of this primordial black hole, it should be that the day can be of the can be dark can be dark. So the evaporation so that is as far as I'm quite clearly stay to detect. So the evaporation you're talking is significant to detect the detection, but now it's taking two days in the as for the experiment one. Which would be more positively favorable to show the performance of the performance, which would be the most favorable one, which is the case. Like, for example, the case of the SID, then for the primordial dark matter, we can't do this less likely. That is, Thank 
my second question is that when you are discussing about the mass of the dark matter, from this to that, how do we precisely calculate that? Like, what would be the mass limit of a dark matter? Like, what, what would be its mass? No, no, no. Uh, what would be the mass limit of a dark matter day you know, or like how exactly do we like for the center of the particle we can uh two particles in the mass of this will be this one five minutes exactly so then what kind of problem is that so people want to to be near to for this for I think this for this how the structure form on the original like we try to make out what in the mass of the dark matter and we get the mass by the same being generated from the center of the particles you have made that. The dark matter, the dark matter particles, we get the mass from the same being interacting with the heat particle by its origin. What could be the possible response to like that? Yeah, one thing I have there are other issues there, this is for human heart. There is another issue there, the dark matter leaks. And that dark matter heat doesn't interact with the standard model. Otherwise, you cannot explain those phenomena. If you are a calibrated human, the scattering is to be parallel model. Many of those parallel models, you have to have a look at something to detect. So you have to, in your you have to have. Now, we see from at least one particle in the dark sector to the middle of the next. Still, we have a computer for like that. It's not in the field. It's there. The dark matter is used as a number of things. That's why they call it and then. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, all of you done. But we are still 
top of this semester, but definitely uh, in the form of the it will be like a workshop. So, Professor Ailey is the one from University of Hyderabad will come and we give a talk on physics higher education with prospect and talent. So, what are the challenges and excitement? Thank you. 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 Thank you.